The captured project is a collection of illustrations done by people in jail depicting people that ought to be in jail, like the Koch brothers. Lloyd Blankfein, the CEO of Goldman Sachs. John Watson, CEO of Chevron. Brian Moynihan, CEO of Bank of America, etc., etc. You get the point. Last week, I sat down with Jeff and Andrew to talk about this project and indeed some of their other creative activism endeavors, including a Snowden bust and an NSA-inspired recording project. Take a look. Andrew and I um, were watching a lot of documentaries about <clears throat> the environment and the destruction to it, and we saw that <clears throat> there were so many of these activities being, being done by uh, corporations that if you and I did them, would be certainly deemed illegal. And when we said, what, imagine someone who was in prison seeing these things happening. You know, but what's an artistic interpretation of that that could, you know, get the point across very quickly? Um, and then somehow the idea was riffed to what it eventually was. So who, I mean, some of these draw. I mean, these drawings are really good. It's not like I drew them or something, just like a ridiculous <laughs> stick figure or something. These are really well done drawings. How did you find people to create them? And who are some of these people who did the drawings? So, um... We spent a lot of time looking at the quality of the artists before we engaged with them to be part of the project. And we were able to do that by having a lot, we, we identified people in prison who do draw or paint or do some other type of, of visual art. <clears throat> and then through their uh, families and friends on the outside, we were shown samples of their previous work. So we already knew that we were working with inmates who had spent a lot of time cultivating their craft and their talent. Gotcha. And so did you tell them or give them ideas on who to draw? Because... I mean, if not, this speaks to a, a, an incredibly high level of awareness of corruption and twisted people from people on the inside that most Americans don't have. I will tell you this. They all have a very high level of understanding of corruption, but from their side, not from the side that we showed them. So the answer is no, they did not choose these subjects. We chose them for them, but they knew the idea of the project before they went in. So we sent them each uh, different photographs of the CEOs, and then we sent them a big, big, thick document, as much paper as we were allowed to send to the prisons, of some of the behaviors of these companies that the person they were drawing represented. And from then, they were able to start creating their art. And did you tell them that you wanted it to look like, hey, just make it a portrait? Because, I mean, the, the, the portraits are, they look like something that you might have above a fireplace. Did people sure. try, try to get creative and, like, show the Koch brothers, like, shoving money down somebody's throat or something? That did so, exist. Yeah, yeah great, great question, actually. Very perceptive. Um, we, we did give them sort of our editorialized vision of the project, which was basically just, you know, let's make a portrait that could hang in a boardroom. That could be, you know, beside this CEO <coughs> or chairman's desk. But yeah, to your point, uh, we got not a lot, but we got several, two, two or three. Yeah, there were a few um, that were very editorialized from the inmates' perspective, and it was kind of heartbreaking because these drawings were often really beautiful, should amazing. I show, should I show one? Yeah, sure. I'll show you. Jeff one. will grab yeah, one. Yeah. But I don't know if you'll be able to see in camera here. This is. Oh wow! Yeah. Do you want yeah, to hold one side closer, of it out? Maybe. Wow. So as you can see, it's a, he's got a forked tongue and uh, a half-eaten away skeletal face. In your conversations with these, with these inmates, what did you find to be some of their reactions, not necessarily just to the project, but just to the, like, the idea that, okay, here are these people that did all these awful things that you're talking about, and okay. here I am for selling weed or something. Did they seem to have this strong sense of injustice, or had they sort of like accepted it? To be completely clear, none of the artists that we have worked with are in for petty crimes. Those same types of crimes, theft, manslaughter, murder, are being committed by the company. So that's why they were chosen, not just because of their talents, but because the crimes they committed line up with the crimes that the corporations committed. Many of them said, uh, yes, I should not, very few said they didn't do the crimes. And very few felt like they shouldn't be punished. They were all like, I'm, I'm serving the punishment I should be serving. But others are not. There's another injustice that takes place, and we, we still communicate with some of the artists. And we just got a letter the other day from one of them telling us about, he's like, are you aware of the hunger strikes that are going on in the prison? Are people talking about it? Maybe people are talking about that. I didn't know about it. And they're having a hunger strike. Things, the, the level of treatment has to be so deplorable for the inmates to say, only if we die in mass or become sick in mass will people pay attention. And that's how we're treating those who are trying to pay their debt to society while we treat those who are committing crimes 
exponentially larger than they have committed, being treated to boardrooms and private cars and private schools and their own private world um, that yeah. we all just live in. <laughs> yeah, it just forces you to, con I mean, it doesn't force you, but it gives you the option to consider, you know, how we, how we treat our people, um, both sort of poles of untouchables, you know, the, the people who make the rules as well as the people who, even once they pay their debt, are still not made whole. I also think it's kind of fascinating to make the, you know, this is something that I, I sort of started doing during this project, um, to compare yourself and your actions to those of some of these people. There's a very good chance that these people were raised and sort of contained by an environment where there just weren't many opportunities. And yeah, it's easy, it's easy for us to say, um, you know, oh, well, you pull yourself up by your bootstraps. But that's, that's really the... That's those, if you have bootstraps. Yeah, those are the words of someone who has bootstraps. And so, you know, it forced me to examine, like, what would I do in that situation? Would I have maybe done the exact same thing? And before I was so quick to say, oh, no, but I have better morals and values, whatever. Then I was forced to consider, what are the things that I'm choosing to do right now that maybe aren't so ethical? Is it okay that I have a mortgage with Wells Fargo? Is it okay that I buy... Hershey's chocolate bars. So at one point, Andrew and I talked about maybe we should put drawings of ourselves in there because we're just as culpable. We t but then that opened us up to, well, let's put the politicians to take the lobbying money. Let's put the lobbyists. It's a chain of corruption that we're all a part of if we live on the grid. I mean, we just think if our project can help in some way, just or our projects, help people to stop and consider where they are and what is a right, what is a privilege, what do you take for granted, what do you think about on autopilot as opposed to being discerning and analytical in what you're doing. This is not, I mean, this project is not your first foray into political art. You've also done several other projects, and I won't name them because I don't know if you want to put your... Yeah, we're out now. Okay, we're, you're out, okay. Outed. Well, <laughs> we're outed by, for installing a four-foot um, statue of Edward Snowden uh, onto a memorial that was honoring those who lost their lives during the Revolutionary War. And we thought that that would be an interesting way to not only have a discussion about is what Edward Hope Snowden did heroic, but also connect it to a narrative of sacrifice that had been made many, many years before for a set of ideals that this country was founded upon. And should we not also honor someone who in the short term looks like a criminal or a traitor who might ultimately be another one who's fighting for the same ideals? There seems to be like a red thread throughout a lot of your projects that sort of poses this question, what is criminal? Talk a little bit about like where do you get your inspiration for these projects, and is 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 that your ultimate goal to have people kind of introspectively question? A lot of people talk about raising awareness, and a lot of our projects on some level are trying to raise awareness. But Andrew and I have had some discussions, <clears throat> and we thought awareness really isn't the problem. With a flick of your finger on your mobile device, you can be aware of the Syrian refugee crisis, Zika, famines, coups. A wars that we've announced that we're in, wars that we haven't announced that we're in. And when you're so aware all the time of so much, you kind of retreat and say, it's insurmountable. I have nothing, I can't do anything but be a passive viewer to this. And it becomes theater and you become an audience member. So if we could do projects that wake you up as that finger is flicking for a moment and get you to stop and just kind of remove yourself from the low, dull, hypnotic buzz of the, of the feed noise, um, then that's a success. We're always trying to find ways for people to take our projects and do something else with them. I mean, we were really humbled that after we put the Snowden statue up and it was removed by the police, another group of artists called the Illuminator, they came by and they reinstalled it as a hologram. We didn't collaborate with them or corroborate with them. We didn't even know who they were at the time. We woke up in the morning and we saw, as we flipped our fingers to the news feed, that the Snowden statue had been replaced by a light version of it, a light uh, display. And we're like, holy shit, that's awesome. Like our project inspired someone else to do a project. Maybe someone sees the Illuminator and decides to do another project. Maybe someone sees all these projects and isn't, doesn't consider themselves an artist, although everyone can be, and their form of expression is to call out corruption in their small little office or the donut shop they work in or something that's in their life. But when you see someone took a risk and they just did it, um, it can inspire you to do it. For more on The Captured Project, visit thecapturedproject.com, where you can not only buy the book, but scroll through images of the unincarcerated crooks and see what crimes they should be doing time for. 
and who captured them and what that artist is doing time for. Spoiler alert, the list of crimes for the unincarcerated is way, way longer. And for more on other projects in Jeff and Andrew's portfolio, visit Jeff's site at jeffgreenspan.com.